Hello, lovely people. How the hell are you? We're the Warm and Toasty Club. My name's John O'Casson, and this is our online memory afternoons, episode 24. No, 34. I couldn't count. Still can't. No, I can't. I can't I count very well. Episode 34. Um, what have we got coming up for you this afternoon? Well, we have the wondrous um, singer and all-round good guy, A.D. Johnson, will be appearing in a, in a while after half one, if you um, need to pop off and have a cup of tea. Um, he'll be back after half one. Um, we've got the memory of the week. The memory of the week this week is, what was your, what was the best part of childhood, your childhood for you? Do you remember that? Early days, remembering, remembering. What was the best part of your childhood? If you don't have any, make something up. Um, we've got the Retro Ref Wall. Three questions, three virtual prizes. Uh, thanks to uh, Jeanette, who's been uh, cooking this week. She sent me over some of her little uh, recipe things. We've got um, we've got a return. We've brought it back. It, it seemed quite popular last week. Toast Toppings of the Week is back. Yes, it's a second week. We'll see if it survives a third week. Of course, we've got Jeanette's poem of the, of the week. And we've got the lovely... Um, Tom and Jeanette appearing on our screens. Actually, let, let me just find them here. Let me see if I can find that Tom and that Jeanette to come forth. There they are. Good afternoon. How are you, Hi, Tom everyone. and Jeanette? Hi. Yeah, yeah. Fine. thank you. How is your life at the moment? How are you bearing up under the strain? Who are you asking? <laughs> oh, well, it's you, because you're a very nice looking lady. <laughs> well, my life is pretty good. Um, always lovely for me i i have a lovely family <clears throat> I live with my sister who's great uh we see um her daughter jade she's in our bubble and she comes to visit and we go there and uh, my lovely daughter's in london and we speak on the phone all the time um i've got a fairly decent house i've got my own business that's going oh really well do um, i look like Eamon andrews <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having a great time. It's, I'm really enjoying myself. I'm making lots of music at the moment. I'm writing and oh yeah, and, yeah, recording and now I'm having a lovely time. So couldn't be better. So I, I wish some of that on everybody else. I, I hope, hope you, you can transfer that. that. People will be wanting a little bit of that, won't they? In the lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Tom? Yeah, it's been awful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yin and yang. Yeah. No, no, I can't complain. <laughs> How awful has it been? Enough. <laughs> Honestly, well, it was, all, it was well, it was it was like all right until I heard how well Jeanette was doing. It's made me feel so much worse. Yeah, you, know, you, you should be. People should be careful if they're having a great time. You know, they shouldn't. Well, I do. Well, you shouldn't were, only because you asked, John. I, <laughs> I did ask. I did ask. <laughs> But if anybody wants to have any of that positivity, I have said before publicly on, on Facebook, I think, um, just get in touch with me. I, I will happily, you know, listen and um, read poetry to you. <laughs> I don't know what else I can do. Well, I don't know. Uh, I think what you could do, your life's so brilliant. You could do, we could do Jeanette's Mrs. Motivator sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you I don't have to wear a leotard, do I? I mean, I've yeah, got one. Yeah, yeah, and your leg warmers, and yeah, you're shouting no, I... out uh, per, 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 positive things to people. Sorry, Tom. I thought she could be an agony aunt. Oh, yeah, I'd be saying that all the wrong things, though. Yeah, well, that's all right, isn't it? I don't, I don't think any of them get anything right, do they? But, I, mean... I don't know. I'd be worried, though, that I'd be giving people advice and they might take it and it might be well, You wrong. could do it in a sort of tongue-in-cheek way, couldn't you? I yeah. prefer the, the Mrs. Motivator thing because, as as you know, I um, I have ballet lessons on a Thursday. And so I have all the outfit that's very similar to kind of Mr. Motivator. And I could keep that on for a, a Friday and just do a little, you know, little Mrs. Motivator. Well, I'm not Mrs. Miss Motivator should... session. You could do an Ask Jeanette. Ask Jeanette, section. yeah. That. Yeah, you yeah. could. Uh, we could put a disclaimer on in case you yeah. say something. And it Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Imagine um, that. Imagine if I told people to, yeah, no, chuck him out. 
<laughs> That'd be my advice. <laughs> Live with your sister. Honestly, it's just lovely. I mean, it won't be hard to turn this into a sketch show, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say hello to people. Jenny, Jenny Lifko, the former queen, the returned queen of the retro raffle scene, says hello, everyone. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kim. Um, hi, Sandra, Brian um, and Chrissy. Hi, Brenda. Yes, indeed. Lovely people. Hi, Irene and Colin. Nice to see you. Hi, Elmi. Um, how are you all doing? Are you OK? Are you bearing up? Have you got everything you need? Are you as happy as Jeanette? All of those <laughs> questions and others will be answered on this week's episode of Soap. Um, <laughs> where did that come from? No idea. The seventies, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry. I, I, you know what it was the other day. Um, my my wife bought me um a little um Epsom salts. I think they were from Pound Stretcher, and they were really nice. And I had them with Radox in a bath, and I smelt like the seventies, and it was lovely. Oh, you know. Yeah, I remember the Radox. My mum used to have Radox. It was the only mm. way she could relax when she had four children. <laughs> I don't, my bath is really small. I, I we use the shower, but it's quite a short bath. So if I, I mean, I am quite tall, but when I sit in my bath, my feet are against the end, and so if I lay down, my knees are bent. So I don't tend to have baths because they're not very comfortable, and I miss yeah. them. And a Redox bath would be. Lovely. I tell you what, they're lovely. But they, I'm like you. If I want to put my head in the water. I get as far as my bottom, then the legs have to be totally up in the air. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Quite... My, 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 either my bum <laughs> is going to be touching the tap end if I get laid down, or if I sit up, my feet are touching the tap end. There's no, I yeah. can't even relax back. Thinking it's, about it's it. It's like you... those old fashioned tubs that people used to have in front of their fire, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And really, are you, like that. Are you, you confusing your... that with the sink? <laughs> Yeah, because I'm only are that going, big. Are you going in the wrong thing, Jeanette? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to lay down in the shower. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, don't put your bum end on the taps. That's no. Not, no. No. <laughs> no, anyway. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Anne. Hello, Ken. Nice to see you. Let's play the Retro Raffle. It's the Retro Raffle. Yeah. It's coming to your screen. It's the Retro Raffle. Never has been seen. It's the Retro Raffle. And it's coming. It's coming to your screen. Oh, yeah. It's coming. It's coming to your screen. Retro Raffle Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. I like right. your dancing, Tom. I hope his dancing was good because I was otherwise yeah, well, trying, to, <laughs> trying to find the screen. Oh, shush. Right. Um, retro raffle. Let me find the questions. Let me find the prizes. So this week, um, the lady there on the right, Jeanette, she sent me some um, some lovely um, recipes that she'd been creating. Yeah. And um, I thought we'd share some of those with you. These are going to be prizes. If you like them lots... Um, Jeanette, we'll send them to you. Um, you might get them, you might not. It's the normal routine. It's a virtual thing. You know what I mean. Uh, let me, I'm trying to think, what one should I go with first? Let's go with this one to be the first prize. This is a bridal meat doll. This is, <laughs> do you remember those dolls that everybody had in their house and they were sort of all doily like, you know, and big dresses? Did they cover toilet rolls? That's the it. That's what they covered. Yeah. This one is Jeanette's made a bridal meat doll to cover your toilet roll. <laughs> um, the, re <laughs> the reason being, it sort of has to be an outside toilet because it keeps the meat nice and cold. Yeah. And um, toilet. nowadays, very, very hygienic. Yeah. Very hygienic. <laughs> yeah. If you get short of a bit of toilet roll and you run out, you just grab a little bit of ham, do a little wipe. Away you go. Uh, or you take a bit of bread in with you. I don't know. Yeah, just watch. Don't put anything back. Though. Yeah. That wouldn't uh, work out well. Where am I going with this? I've no idea. <laughs> um, but that's your first uh, first prize this week. Thanks to Jeanette and her bridal meat doll. Um, you could be winning that, kids, if you answer this question correctly. What was invented in 1931 as polymer 66? Think on. I know you weren't around in 1931. 
well, there might be somebody here who's around in 31, but it had a big, big impact on the world, ladies particularly. I wonder if um, people think about things. Um, I, I've heard that people believe in past lives and things like that, and that they were here as a different person. And so maybe some of the people here believe they were here in 1931. There you go. All right, so reincarnation. Because <laughs> that would be this life, wouldn't it? Didn't it? <laughs> so some people could come back as a meat uh, old. I know you were only twenty, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian says they have one in in their loo. Oh, he what, means a loo, loo, a loo roll. Oh. A loo roll, <laughs> meatloaf. Um, oh. Keith Straight Inc. Keith Glyn Baker, welcome, sir. Uh, nice to see you. Straight in with the right answer. Quinton, no, it's not plastic, I'm afraid. Michael Francis, hello, Michael. He's got the right answer. Brenda's got the right answer. Sandra's got the right answer. The reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene, Jenny Lifko, has got the right answer. It is, of course. Nylon was what was invented in 1931 as polymer 30, uh, 66. 36 was an earlier version that didn't work. <laughs> um, Jeanette, just lawn. Jeanette will be sending you that um, that special bridal meat doll for your outside toilet holder. It may not be ham. It could be chicken slices or very thinly sliced spam. Have you got any tongue? No. Ox all tongue. out of that. <laughs> all out of that. Yeah, tongue with a jelly. Um, yeah. It doesn't fold as well, does it? <laughs> It springs back, doesn't it? It springs back, yeah, or <laughs> loosens itself out of the jelly. Yeah. There, you, there you go. That's a sharp the, side to it. There's your first prize. Let me find the second prize. Where are you? Where are you? Get Make sure I get the right one. Um, second prize um, is... Oh, no, sorry, I, I put the wrong one up there. Hold on a minute. I can't find it now. That's the wrong one. We can't have that. That's outrageous. That looks like Jeanette. It looks one. like a candle. <laughs> Um, yeah, the candle in the wind. We can't can't show that one. <laughs> it looked a bit rude, didn't it? Only you, Tom. Only you were thinking that. Um, no, no, I was just looking at Jeanette um, yeah. what, with her big smile. And I thought, I what's, why, what's she smiling at? Why is she all made up today? Yeah. With a flashy scarf and that. I am being flashy. <laughs> very nice, very nice. You look very nice. So does Thank Tom as, as well. <laughs> that's very kind. I know he's it's not true. Too. <laughs> he's, he's like he's got that nice brown jog uh, hoodie on. Yeah. No, he's, he's looking good. His hair's growing a little bit, which is nice. I don't know where I'm going either. Um, here's the question. <laughs> this this is a hot dog extravaganza. Extravaganza, darling. Um, I believe it's. Would you say, Jeanette, when you made this, it had a pineapple underneath it? And you slice some and steam some carrots and put them at the bottom. Um, the pineapple is still there. If you look closely, it is, yeah, I thought, it is I still you there, but all the uh, rough edges have been smoothed off. Right. Um, and yeah, I had this uh, for dinner just last night. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> After, that... this, that's what I made with the leftovers. I made two of them. So. It was too can much I that. ask, did you slice the hot dogs but just leave the last end a bit so they've got that nice turn, or did you do two per row? I did two per row. Ah. Did you use any of that? I saw Bake Off, they got this spray, and it's like I suppose it's like sugar glue or something. Did you use any of that? No, no, that's real grease on there. Just lard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lard. Yeah, yeah, you can have that. Have that yeah, I had to melt it first and put it into a spray gun to be able to spray it because you don't get that same effect by putting lumps of lard on. No, you've got a good no. sheen there, haven't you? I've got you, a lovely sheen. And I managed to avoid the top, the leaves of the pineapple. It's just on the sausage just and right. carrots. You could a bit of dripping would have done that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. And they're proper frankfurters as well. <laughs> oh, they've got sort of all sorts of special meeting. Oh yeah. Or, or none. Um, 
Oh, you went for the um the oh right, let's not go there. <laughs> Helen says, love looking at you at three of my favourite people on a Friday. Oh, oh. what a lovely thing to say. Thank you. Very just much. work out how much that's gonna cost. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Helen. We'll get that check off to you. I like your calculator noise. Did you have you really got a calculator there? Yeah. You have <laughs> It stays, it stays here all the time because I'm just constantly working things out. I'm quite good at maths, actually. But um, when you get lots of figures, um, you know, now I'm a multi-million pound artist. I have <laughs> in my own books. Um, yeah, no, I bought it. It's been yeah. really good. In the 70s, I wanted a, a, a calculator for Christmas. And I was so disappointed when it arrived because I thought, oh, they've not put anything else with it. And all I've got is this calculator. But actually, this one, I got it from Poundland about five years ago. And Ooh. it does the job. There's no need for batteries. It hasn't changed. Well, you're talking of calculators. I put mine in a drawer here. Yeah, let's go calculate it. Crazy people. Well, I've just got things in front of the drawer, so it's a bit tricky. Oh, you can just get it out. Right. Just... Very similar. Ah. This, this is my office. Um, the only problem one. is that something's happened and um, the numbers don't all work. That's alcohol. There's, they're kind of alcohol. faded in places. Oh, no, you uh, don't It's know. on my shopping list. So Poundland, did you say, Jono? I've got this one in Poundland. Other uh, shops are available. Um, right. Yeah, you don't want it where you can't see the figures. That's really not oh, a good idea. Yeah, they're just kind of half of them are just faint. No, that's. I wondered when you sent me how much we owed you. Um, <laughs> it's, only two, it's only two pence. <laughs> yeah, I put another five zeros on that. All sorts of things. Um, Michael says, lost your video message that we're having trouble playing it ah oh, sorry oh. michael um if you go to the warm and toasty club page and you'll see on our videos where it says videos down the side or i can't remember where they've put it it'll have say live um in red it'll sort of be flashing live and that's the one you go to it'd be the newest one on our videos the other way if people just uh, for a moment if you, if you want to know when we're going live if you press follow on our page which usually is under the picture of tom i think on the page but facebook have changed things around so i'm not sure if you follow the warm and toasty club you'll always know exactly when we go live it will give you a notification saying the warm and toasty club have just gone live so there we go anyway to win that lovely um what we what are you calling it jeanette uh, uh... <laughs> careful frank frank apple <laughs> frank apple to win that lovely Frank Apple, answer this question correctly, please. Pine, pine furter. Pine furter. Oh, yeah. pine furter. <laughs> what are you having for your tea? I'm having a pine furter. A great big pine furter. Um, <laughs> actually, I can't know. I was going to do a Geordie accent. <laughs> Were you having a pain footer? No, no. <laughs> that's, 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 it's Indian, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's uh, Alf Peter's own pet. I'm just going for a job. I'm just going for a job. No, it sounds Indian, doesn't it? Oh, on oh. I think you need, yeah, we need some probably somebody to give us a few um, few lessons on that Which one. Geordie actor? No, that's not, that's not right. Which Geordie actor sang... Uh, about his crocodile shoes. Crocodile shoes. Mm. Mm. And he wasn't mm. from India or Wales. Are you sure? I thought he was from India. He had that same accent as you had just now. Um, you know. <laughs> Why I? <laughs> Why I? <laughs> Oh, I can't do an Indian accent. No, I can't do an Indian accent. And it's wrong to be doing those sort of accents anyway. It's very I, um, I've been to Newcastle a couple of times. And uh, it's very strange because uh, apart from I'm warm and toasty, a, a lot of my friends call me Nettie. That's my kind of nickname, if you like. And Nettie. my family all, always refer to me as Nettie. And in Newcastle, a Nettie um, is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so they think it's really sad. Why do your family call you Netty? <laughs> oh. well, they don't have teas. They don't have teas in Newcastle, do they? Netty. Yeah. Yeah. Netty. <laughs> Why I <ain't> Netty? <laughs> Which Geordie actor sang about his crocodile shoes? Just looking at the uh, the comments. Michael, you're back again. Good to see that, mate. Um, Keith says, Giss a job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yossa Hughes. Yossa or something? Hughes. <laughs> um, Brian says America. It's not America. Jenny, the reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene, has got the right answer. Excuse me. 
<clears throat> Brenda says, I know he was on Black Stuff, but can't remember name. It wasn't on Black Stuff. That was uh, Bernard Bernard Hughes, who was Yossa. No, uh, who, who played Ber Yossa Hughes? I thought, Jim, I thought Jimmy Nail was on there, wasn't he? Now, Jimmy Nail was in uh, Alvita Dame, Pat. Oh, yes, that was it, wasn't it? With Barry from Birmingham. I'm not yeah, going to try that accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend who who like just couldn't do accents at all i Is mean not that very, no <laughs> thank you thank you darling i love your work and it was just brilliant because everything like you know welsh accent it just it all came out yeah sub sub subcontinent shall we say <laughs> <laughs> can you do a birmingham accent tom Brummy? no no jeanette can do one well i can do dudley which is close, boy. Dudley. My name's Barry. I'm from Dudley. <laughs> Almost. Sandy that's because my girl. friend Alison's from Dudley. <laughs> oh, that's all right then. Bernard <laughs> Hill was the actor we were thinking Bernard of. Bernard Hill. Hugh. Thank you, yeah. Brenda. Thank you for being there. And the person that got it right was Jenny, of course, Sandra and Kim. It was Jimmy Now, Crocodile Shoes. Yes, well indeed. Done. You all get that, Um, what's it called? Furta? Pine, <laughs> pine, furter. pine furter. furter or a frank apple <laughs> we'll send it in a lovely just jiffy bag you might have to make it up yourself it might be a bit mashed up but you'll get it maybe never right <laughs> um the last prize we have um where are we looking down the bottom of the screen we have this lovely broccoli cake you <laughs> literally <laughs> just plant the broccoli and build the cake around it it seems jeanette yeah yeah, you don't cook the broccoli, obviously. No. Because <laughs> it would never maintain its shape with all the cake batter around it. Mm. Is it is and, that... and the little um, the little sugar pigs that you have around it as well, they're, they're not just for decoration. You can eat them. They're edible. Candy like, pigs. It's like, is that like a vegetarian gala pie or something? Um, I think it's vegan because there's uh, not real egg in there or vegan. milk. Vegan. So vegan. So it's vegan friendly, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, you can win. There's that. no gluten in there either. It, this is even good for even with everyone. the pig. Even with the pig. It's a pig shape made of sugar. It's fine. Okay. If you <laughs> if you're diabetic, you just knock the sugar bits off before you. It's eat sweetener it. sugar. It's not even. It's honestly, this is good for everyone. Sweetener sugar that does your guts in though. You know, <laughs> not good, is it? Um, only a little tiny bit in there. <laughs> oh, only a little tiny bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Go mad. Go mad, people. Um, which is the question which tv show had the slogan the weekend starts right here right here right here right here. yeah we could have that slow we could borrow that couldn't we because the, the weekend, weekend starts, starts right, right here, here. <laughs> you could have them um, yeah what well, the weekend ends right here i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Well, think just just think of that broccoli cake and who, if you were lucky enough to win this or yeah. clever enough to win this, yes. then think who you could share that with because it comes in, you can see it's a loaf cake, but it's a very big loaf cake and it would feed at least 20 people. So I know you can't all get together um, at the moment with lockdown, but you could, um, it's very long life. So you could even package some of it up and send to your uh, friends and family all over the country. I, d I don't know if I've got 20 people that I don't like very much. I don't know. <laughs> you will if they see, if you send them there. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. I've, I've got very few friends anyway. I don't want to like, have less. <laughs> I think it yeah. looked nice. I think it looked nice on the side, like on a shelf, like just the life slice. <laughs> like, those, like those ducks. Oh, yeah. like the duck on the wall. <laughs> do you remember those ducks? Do, uh, Ilda Ogden, wasn't it? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Hilda and Stan. Oh, but you've got really good slices there that show the centre of the broccoli. Obviously, it's like those, are they called gala pies? that like pork pie with mm. egg in them. Mm. Sometimes you get the slice of just the very end of the white bit of the egg and none of mm. the yellow, mm. which is disappointing. And you're going to find a slice of this at some point with the end of the broccoli. So not a tiny bit of green in the middle. I do wonder what people at home think of us going on. Like, <laughs> what are they on about? Get to the punchline. You <laughs> never get to the punchline. Punch <laughs> well, I, I forget what the punchline even was. What, what was the question? <laughs> exactly. 
Well, the question here in Retro Raffle was which TV show had the slogan, the weekend starts right here. So oh, we've yeah. got the answer, oh, X Factor, which actually maybe they borrowed that. Um, maybe <laughs> Dermot O'Leary borrowed that. Brenda says Top of the Pops. Michael's not far away, 6-5 special. If you think um, if you think back that sort of time, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what there. that was. Was it Boys from the Black Stuff? Boys from the Black Stuff. <laughs> That was a great entertainment show, wasn't it? Yeah. The weekend starts here. Top of the Pops was on a Thursday, as I recall. Thursday, I yeah, that's, so that's good. That that's a good way to start the weekend. It's a proper weekend, isn't it? Yeah. 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 X Factor was a Saturday night, was it? Don't know. Yeah, don't know. I think so. You're probably already into the weekend by then. Don't know, it's not don't so know. good. Well, the weekend starts here on a Saturday night. That would be a very dull, very short very weekend. Short. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Weekend starts here, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Was it That's Life? That's life. Um, Sunday we, evening. Esther Rant. <laughs> That's very late Sunday. Yeah. Evening. We're all, we're all <laughs> Not much of a weekend. Yeah, half Odd an hour of it. coming up. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, that's life. And you're off to bed now after you've watched that. <laughs> Brenda says program with Paulie Yates presenting. Can't remember name. That was the tube. The tube. <laughs> uh, <before laughs> then. Um, uh, Keith swearing at us. He's saying TFIF. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sandra either. saying jukebox jewelry. No, do you want me to give it to you? Do you want me to give it to you, people? Well, hang on, hang on. Has um, has Jenny mentioned? Oh, yeah. Where's Jenny, gone? Where's Jenny? Where are you? Where's, where's, uh, where's Duncan? Where's Duncan this where's week? Duncan gone to answer. Where's Duncan people? when you need him? Yeah. Yeah. Probably He's decorating probably working or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's doing painting. a wall somewhere. He's, yeah. yeah, he's painting things. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you the answer because um, I think Jeanette would like to keep that cake, actually. <laughs> um, the answer to the question, which TV show had the slogan, the weekend starts right here, was ready, steady, go. There you have it. Never seen that. No, that was in my season. time. Um, there we go. We take that away from you. We don't have to. Give that away, Jeanette's well pleased. Yeah, that was the retro <laughs> raffle. I'm not even going to play the tune, I'm going to try and save time. Um, oh. did that go off funny? Say it went editor. Ooh. Um, <laughs> let me ask you about the memory of the week, then, Tom and Jeanette. This, Tom, over to you first. What was I know you, you might not remember it all. Um, what was the best part of your childhood, Tom? Ooh, I can't really remember a lot of it, really. Um, Best part of my childhood. Uh, used to do, used to go out swimming quite a lot, which was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not nude swimming, but uh, but yeah, swimming. I suppose playing on the beach. I used to play on the beach and go swimming a lot. So, not that I can remember an awful lot of it, but yeah. And this would be in Spain, where it's nice and hot and sunny. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think my brother and sister were quite envious the fact that I used to go on the beach as a child. But yeah, nice, nice. nice. That's Have a nice you, bit of noise. Yeah, I'm oh. doing some background. We can't afford background music. So oh, right. <laughs> I've got yeah. one of these. I've got my little Jeanette, that goes with it. Favorite childhood. Um, well, I've got. A weird one. I, I would say my siblings, uh, and it was the best of my childhood and the worst of my childhood. <laughs> siblings. <laughs> it's great. I, I felt a bit sorry for my daughter. She's grown up as an only child, and I used to have to just bring other kids home from school to play with her at tea time and stuff. But it, it was just, yeah, it was great having brothers and sisters and, and having them now as well. It's just wonderful. But also it was tricky at times. You just fight about stuff. But yeah, that was it. Best that and the worst. I was thinking about this, not, not that much really, just now thinking about it. Um, and I think it was freedom. The best part of my childhood was freedom. That it was still, I was still of an age, still at a time where we could just go out all day long. You know, when it wasn't school, summer holidays, um, weekends, you could go out with a, I don't know, a jam sandwich or something, perhaps not anything much, have your breakfast and go out all day and not worry about anything. You didn't have bills. That was good. That was yeah. one of the best things about childhood. You had no bills. You know, who wants bills? 
Yeah. But um, you lived in, in uh, what I would have seen as inner city. You lived in Hackney, didn't you? Yeah, in London. Whereas I lived out in the countryside in Buckinghamshire and it was in a, a small village. So we just had miles and miles of fields and rivers. And, and so it really was freedom and, and we would not be seen <laughs> for a whole day. So it was it was lovely. Yeah, I know what you mean. That that you just didn't have the worries that you did. But we now. also we were in Hackney, but you also had like places like the River Lee, and they had a thing called the Island, which was sort of like a, a, by a, sort of the river, and there was a wildlife spot, and you you had loads of open ground, loads of trees to climb. Um, so some of it was in sort of like um, more rural areas, but just. They weren't right next door. The rest of it was yeah. playing Planet of the Apes on our bikes or on our feet around Stillman Close in Hackney on a council estate. What other people? What other people thinking? What's your the best part of your childhood? I can play the music when you sort of say it. Um, Brian says being innocent, <laughs> being innocent. <laughs> he still, still is. <laughs> he's still now. He's innocent. That Brian. I can't believe he's still innocent. Chris. Chris says taking children out for walks and dog walks in the country. Um, oh, dog walks in the country. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Um, Jenny says had the girl on who said Ollie gave it for you. I think she's been. Is that ready, steady, sherry. go or something? I don't that... know. It probably is. Sorry, Jenny. I'm sorry. I just in a yeah near Hackney Marshes. Um, that's one place, Keith. Um, playing outside with friends, says Sandra. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't that lovely? Jenny says, yes, we had freedom, but we didn't realise how lucky we were. Yeah, I just think it's nice to not grow up, isn't it? And I think you've got to hold a little bit back, even into your adult. Um, what's it? There, there's a famous thing that they say, a, a, a meme. Um, don't grow up, it's a trap. And, oh, uh, yeah, there's also the other one, that um, growing old is going to happen but growing up is you, you can choose can't you it's optional yeah. yeah i think you have to keep for me personally i have to keep a little bit of youthful behavior me too. Um, and it holds you in such good stead in life if you can just sort of like be silly at least once a day let's see what people are saying lost sound oh she lost the sound <laughs> sorry sandra um i'll play some more for you i'm sorry you lost the sound now we are back around right anyway um elmy says cycling to the beach oh, um, nice wow that's that sounds mm -hmm. lovely playing out with friends says kim yeah michael's similar playing football and cricket in the street we had uh we used to play i played cricket once i i got these white stay pressed trousers i, I think i like it with the backing music actually um <laughs> i got these white stay pressed trousers i was about 14, 13, 14, and I thought I was a right little mod or sort of thing. And um, I decided to go and play. They were playing cricket, the boys, just around the corner on the grass uh, behind the houses, one along. Decided to go and play cricket, grabbed the cr cricket bat, batted it for like what would have been a six in any other country. <laughs> um, and I, I skidded on the grass on dog poo, and it got all dog poo up my white stay pressed trousers. No. I was so disappointed. I never wore them again. Brand new. My mum says, oh, I probably didn't get that out. And I'm like, you'll never get that out of my disappointment in life. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still a little bit affected by that. <laughs> there, is, there is counselling from Jeanette after the show, if anyone's affected by any best, issues. Was that one of your best moments as a child? Then? That was my favourite moment as a child. Yeah. I realised I'm probably peaking on this mic, so I'm going to do that. Sorry, um, I digress. Keith says, being outside, covered in mud, climbing trees, rope swings and grazing knees. Ah, oh, he's... Oh, a... and that was just last week. That was just last week in his <laughs> little short trousers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, send us pictures from last week. We'd love to see that. Um, oh, and there's one back. comment before we head off to see Mr. A.D. Johnson. We have Sandra. Oh, she's back now. Hello, Sandra. Nice to see you. To see you nice. Um, I hope you're keeping well. I'm looking for A.D. Johnson. A.D. Johnson. Where is A.D. Curly hair. Yeah, he should very, be very on my screen. He's ready to join guitar. the podcast. Yeah, guitar. <laughs> there he is. There he is. 
Let's see if we can get him on screen. One, two, three. A.D. Johnson. Phew. Hello. Well, was that a mad moment that you kind of... Well, it, 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 uh, my screen disappeared. The little screen at the bottom disappeared. I just realised. I hadn't had you not said where is AD, then I would have wouldn't have clicked on the camera thingy. Anyway, we're here. We're all good. Uh, you're okay. You're looking well. Ah, well, you know, looks can be lie. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm, 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 all, <laughs> I'm all the better for seeing you guys. Ooh, oh, good line. Yeah. Good line. <laughs> yeah. We no, like them kind uh, of lines. Brought cheer into my day. I could sit oh. and watch you all day. I'm sure anything. you're going to do that for us, though. When when you start singing and playing that guitar, it's so lovely. Well, we'll see. I haven't practiced much, so could have be go horribly wrong. But you know, uh, even you, unpracticed for five years, would shame us, really. You know, <laughs> certainly shame me. Um, Tom's not bad; he can play a little bit. Um, <laughs> a little bit. So you got three songs, one at a time. Yes. Anything, anything you're going to start off with? You want to tease us about, or you're going to just? Ooh. Well, I wasn't sure. I knew what I was going to play for two of them. Uh, and then I was just messaging a friend of mine from France who's probably hopefully watching. Mm. Um, and she said, oh, I'd like you to play Put the World on Standby, um, oh, which I thought was kind of, um, which, of course, has got resonances, <laughs> got resonances. <laughs> even though it's been written with that in mind. So I thought I'd, I'd start off with that one and dedicate that one to her. And that's from the album... London songs, yeah, London so songs. came out in it, it, time was marching on, isn't it? It's um 2018, that was yeah, it's so felt no. like yesterday, doesn't it? Really? I know it's this mad world, Shoom. indeed. Put the world on standby, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Tom and Jeanette will get off the screen and say <laughs> once again, welcome, A.D. Johnson. <laughs> Took a chance with us and rolls. Or maybe I took the wrong dose. Don't think it agreed with me. Material me. Who'd have thought a flower so pretty could do such a thing indeed? I find a place they can't find me I draw the ball to turn the key I need some time to myself Oh, to get well And on my rollerball I'm a not some life I'm Stand by, and it can 
For a bit to come, sorry, Ali. I was thought, <laughs> is he gonna do another little cheeky uh, bit at the end? Yeah, a little false ending there. Yeah, I just realized I was peeking in the red there, so I, I was kind of distracted with my with my flashing um gizmo here. So, I oh, you've got a flashing one, have you? I haven't, <laughs> <peaked>. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell everyone, everyone want one. Yeah, well, I'm hoping yeah. to get one installed after the lockdown, actually. That'd be nice. Um, that so you've lovely. got some fairy lights up, AD. That's nice. Is that your Christmas yeah. fairy lights or everyday fairy lights? They're, they're everyday ones. Um, I, I, um, <laughs> they're kind of only half of them are working now. I need to get a, a new set, really. But, um, yeah, see, they should be a longer top there as well. But uh, right. Okay. So, I should read the comments out. Sandra says, yes, great to see you, AD. Oh, Brenda, Brenda says you got me dancing around the kitchen. Yay! That's what we want. <laughs> Marie says hi all, enjoying your chat and now AD's music. Perfect. Um, Quinton says wonderful way to start my day. Now wave to Quinton because he's in America. Oh, hi, hey, Quinton. Hey, um, uh, Quinton's in America, so it's about I don't know. It's probably about eight, eight thirty, something like that. There, eight forty. Um, Susie's applauding. Elmi says, easy listening, lovely. Quinton, again, from America. He's saying, perfect for my coffee and fantastic. And Michael Francis says, nice. And there was <laughs> one from Steve Smith, who's a, who only comes here when Aidy's here. We don't see him very often, so we're very lucky to get <laughs> <laughs> He says, good to see you, AD, with a smiley face. Hey, nice to see you, Steve. Thanks for dropping by. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's 7.39 where Quinton is in America. 7.39 in the morning. Oh, my Whoa. God. Get back I in bed. I got early just for this. That's lovely. Crazy talk. Crazy talk. Do you, I don't know if you, uh, Jeanette and Tom, you do it. And AD maybe do it as well. On the news where you see people nowadays, and they're often doing webcams from home, I sometimes look at the books on their shelf. So because they're quite small and they're a little further away. I saw he's got one about music on AD's shelf. But I, like, I look it up and then I go on Google if I've got time. This is like an evening, <laughs> not in the day when I'm busy. But um, I look up line and think, oh, I wonder if that book could be good. Or if it's... <laughs> do, you ever do, that? do you ever look at the books? I do, I do if I go around people's houses. Oh, there's that. What, do you go around people's houses? Report him, report him, Jeanette. <laughs> I mean, I'm not supposed to be there, but I do, yeah. When they're oh, out. Yeah, when, when they're, they're out. out. <laughs> Going when they're there. You're not allowed. <laughs> I don't really have many books these days. It's all, you know, I when I read, I read on a Kindle, and I have a few reference books, but somebody once said to me, Get rid of all them. I have bookcases. And get rid of those dust collectors. And so I put them oh. in the loft for a very long time. And then when I last decorated, they never came out again. <laughs> so. uh, it's like when you move home, isn't it? Those are the times when you kind of regret hanging on to all the books. You know? Well, this yeah. is, I'm, ge I'm gearing up now. I'll be moving in about two or three oh, years' maybe. time. Okay, we kindle then. Well, yeah, I've got, I've been here 20 years. So I've got a house full of rubbish. So I've recently cleared out the loft and the shed and getting it ready. <laughs> but books, yeah, no, I don't, I don't bother. But I, I do like to see other people's, like Tom, if I'm in somebody's house. Usually when they're there, I might have a look. I find it, um, I don't, it's the same with AD, um, looking at AD stuff. If he's playing as beautifully as he does and he sings a beautiful song, and then mm -hmm. I see a book that he's got, it actually inspires me somewhat. I don't know if you get this, because both Tom and Jeanette, you know, you're musicians too, alongside AD. Um, when, if somebody has a documentary on and somebody's talking about their music and I really like their songs, I, it makes me go away and write a song. And by the oh. same token, if I see books on their shelves, it often makes me go and write a song on, based on the books. I'm a bit weird, aren't I, really? Is it because you want no, to be like all. them? <laughs> Is it what? Because I want Cause to... you want to be like them. Uh, and if I you read the same what, books, you might. I think we steal everything from things that have been before. So everything we take is something that's happened before. I just think it makes me love music a bit more. It makes me want to go away and write yeah. about it. 
I don't know. Aidy, you're a great reader, I assume. Um, I probably haven't read most of that lot on there. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm working through them. I'm working through them. I think because, because it's just my kind of office musicy room. That's that's my. Uh, they're mostly music books there. Reference books, yeah. Reference books. Right, there's lot, lots about. Um, there's lots of um, books on various artists. Like, there's a Jack Bruce one there, and one on Neil Young and John Lennon, Keith Moon. I've got yeah, some right. Books. Got some poetry books up there as well. Teach yourself to play guitar books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, think you need that one. You can probably get that one, put that one on eBay now, Aidy. You're going to have to, spend, well, you're gonna have to yeah. spend a lot of money, Jono, now. Now you know, know where all the books are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have lots of money because I live a simple life. I mean, I don't have lots of money. But what I tend to do is like sometimes people think, oh, where do you get that? Where do you get this? Just shop around. You know, you can go on eBay and on, on, on Amazon, and you can find, if you want to use Amazon, that is, um, you can find books and things for, like, £2. You know, and a great thing to do in lockdown that I found is if you like old films, they don't have to be really old, old, but if you like old films more recent, you can buy them on, like, sites for, like, a couple of quid, a DVD. And it's worth it because, you know, if you're on a streaming service, you still have to pay quite a bit. It's a really cheap way to entertain yourself. Sometimes when I'm looking at people's books, I just take them and put them in my pocket. <laughs> oh, and just go home. And just go. <laughs> it's quite cheap then. Yeah. He's outrageous, that man, isn't he? Klepto Hardy. Let, me, he just, <laughs> let me mention to AD, uh, Emily. Emily says big hugs from France. Oh, bless. Steve Thanks, Smith. Emily. Steve Smith says, shh, he's shh. meant to be working. <laughs> Steve, Steve Smith is meant to be working. Shh, shh, shh. Um, Susie uh, is laughing. Alison Johnson says, we're watching you, AD. Great music. Keep keep going. Um, he will in a minute. He will in a minute. Um, Sandra likes her book. Yeah. And Helen, Helen Froggett says, hi, AD. Hello, AD. Hello, Helen Froggett. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pop off. What we're going to pop off and do, we're going to do a little uh, feature and we'll have you back. Have a little think about what um, what of the week you would like when it comes up in a second, AD, and we'll uh, we, we yes. gather feedback so from you. Thanks for that. Thanks for joining pleasure. us, mate. It's a pleasure to have you on. We'll see you see in a moment or two. See you in a moment. Here's AD. Um, He's good, isn't he? He's what a lovely man. What a lovely man. I think I might have mentioned it before. It was because of him that I first ever picked up a guitar and started learning to play. He's such I, a proper genius. I think you've uh, he's he's made that sort of like contingent on coming on that you have to mention <laughs> every time you <he's> <laughs> Part of his payment, is it? <laughs> yeah, that Jeanette mentions that yeah, he's, uh, like yeah, inspired by his guitar playing. Let's just do the quick comments. I get a lot of mine from charity shops, books. Yep. Uh, not I can go to charity shops, but it's amazing what you can find out there. Books, particularly if they're not like big ones, you can get them for 50p and a pound. Loads of great things. You don't have to spend loads of money. Steve Smith says, call the cops. Jeanette's already done that. Don't worry. <laughs> and Quin Quinton says, America is rebooting. Please be patient. Oh, what a great thing. We're not going to go into that because it's not that no. kind of show. But We know what he means. What does he, he mean? mean? I don't know. No, you mean. don't. You don't want to know. New president. Tom. New president. It's there? Yeah. Oh, I, thought he, I thought he was just staying. I didn't. I, I, I don't it. talk about it. <laughs> That's his plan. Okay, so for the second, second week running, it's Toast Toppings of the Week. Yeah. Toast Toppings of the Week. <laughs> Toast toppings of the week. Oh, Jono, I love your jingles. Well, that's the first time I've heard that one. I didn't think you were going to bother, but this is going to be a regular thing, is it? Yeah, I'll play it at the end. Oh, well, I started off being Scott Walker, but realised I was more like, was it Topol Fiddler on the Roof? Toast toppings of the week. Yeah. Anyway, all day long. I don't know. Doing accents again, are you? No, oh, sorry about that. So, <laughs> toast toppings of the week. We've got two scorchers for you. First up, jam on toast. Of course, it has to be beautiful. Jam sandwiches are thought to have originated at around the eight, uh, the 19th century in the UK. 
During World War II, food was in short supply and heavily rationed, meaning that Brits had to get creative with their food supplies. The Women's Institute that was therefore given £1,400, blimey, around 75000 in today's money, to buy sugar to make jam in order to keep the country fed. Volunteers preserved 5,300 tonnes of fruit between 1940 and 1945, which was kept in over 5,000 preservation centres, such as village halls, farm kitchens and even sheds. It, uh, of all the facts about the uh, jam, you won't find one more British than this. Yeah, I think that's a good one. In Ian Fleming's novel, From Russia for Love, 1957, James Bond's breakfast was a toast with jam. And the internet asks, what does it mean you're the jam in my toast or you're the jam on my toast? And the answer is, it's the same with you are the butter to my bread. It means two people are very much in need of each other or they match really well. For example, I can say to my friend, Tom, you are the jam in my to my bread. I say that only sometimes to Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, you've often said that to me about Tom. Yes, <laughs> he's gorgeous, though, isn't he? He's absolutely he gorgeous. We like him, Tom. Not everybody's is, taste, but we which like is him. Which, yeah, then, I suppose <laughs> that'll be the next one, wouldn't it? Then, Tom, what are you saying I'm about on toast? <laughs> yes, do you like jam on toast, Tom? I do like jam on toast. One of my favourite breakfasts. Is it? It is. I I like to get up in the morning. Yes. Put the kettle on. Have my, mm. Get my cup of tea ready. Yes. And then I get a couple of slices of homemade bread because we make our own bread. <laughs> Flashy. And then, yeah. And then I get oh. and then I get my favourite jam. What is your favourite jam? It's Mirabelle plum jam. Oh, nice. Don't know that one. Mirabelle plum. Yeah. Write that down. Yeah. Put that down. Mirabelle plum. Yeah. Like you, to make notes. You'd have to go around the shelves. That's what you need, kitchen shelves, isn't it, to find people's stuff. That's, I quite like that as well. That would be good. As well as books. <laughs> you yeah. steal their jam. I steal Where their did, jam. Whose house did you get that Mirabelle plum jam from? My own, actually. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> else has it, I think. <laughs> well, very nice. I'm going to look yeah. that up. Mirabelle plum nice. jam. It would yeah. be nice to have food on the shelves, but the only thing, it's like food shows. You watch them, don't they make you hungry? Like the great yeah. fish bake up is on. I have to have a three course meal while it's on. You've got to eat yeah. beforehand, haven't you? Oh. Mm. Yeah. Should I be wrong this week. I watched it on catch up the next day and quite late. And I had dinner like a couple of hours beforehand. I was like, oh no, now I'm gonna have to eat something. And it was just nuts and raisins. Oh, <laughs> that was my you. snack of choice. <laughs> Bless you and your sad little diet. And, uh, <laughs> you keep your jam and your, and your toast. Keep, keep your bloody jam, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> shove your jam. Do you like jam on bread. toast? Do you like it, Jeanette? No. Jam on toast? No. No, I no, don't eat bread these days on. and I'm not keen. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on to the next one then because Jeanette said her piece. I probably <laughs> grew up on jam on toast and jam sandwiches in the 70s, I reckon. The second one is marmalade, of course. Marmalade has been the core part of our national life since the 18th century, and it was first put into commercial production in 1790 after a Spanish ship carrying a haul, a haul that is, of rotting of Seville oranges was washed ashore at Dundee Harbour during a storm. Ooh, imagine. The cargo was sold off cheaply to a local merchant named James Kibia, whose wife turned the rapidly decomposing citrus slurry into a tangy preserve. It's probably why I've not tried it. You think about it. <laughs> Can't these, blame early, you. <laughs> these early marmalades weren't exactly made from oranges at all. The word marmalade comes from the Portuguese marmelo, a type of quince paste. It was gooey, sweet preserve, preserved, sweetened with honey that the Romans were partial to and was cut into squares a bit like Turkish delight. Marmalade, well, Sir Edmund Hillary took a jar up Everest in 1953 and Captain Scott packed some for the Antarctic in two, nine, nine, 1910. Didn't, didn't do him any good, though, did it? In, in the long run, no. Yeah. Many years later, a solitary, jam, a solitary jar of marmalade was found buried in the ice. That's what was missing. He lost that, didn't he? Paddington Bear loves it also. There you go. There's all the facts. <laughs> Jeanette, are you a marmalade person? I am, but not orange. Um, 
Oh. Well, I, oh, occasionally orange, but as long as it hasn't got bits of the um, peel. Peel. I quite like uh, lime marmalade or lemon marmalade, but once again, only without big bits of skin. <laughs> I've always found the skin bits weird uh, myself. Yeah. Tom, what are you saying? Uh, I'd eat it. I'm not a huge fan, though. Okay. Uh, you like jam. They're keeping it short and sweet. I like it. You, you're yin and yang. Jeanette just <laughs> did that to the jam. You did that to the marmalade. It works. It works. I've only had marmalade maybe three times in my life. Um, and I'm not going down again for it, you know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, I think I'd rather have quince, actually. Let's not go. Let's not bring that into the <laughs> afternoon. Thank you. Um, let's see. Sexy toast says Quinton. That was your, that was your um, jingle. Oh yes, yeah. Mm. Uh, as Keith says, Nick Cave meets no coward. Thank you, darling. Um, Brenda says, "Is it Wilkins of Tiptree?" Tom, I think she was referring oh. to. Probably. Yeah. I mean, she. That's another thing she brings up quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they are. They do nice. Their <laughs> little scarlet jam. Jeanette does a festival called the Little Scarlet Festival, sponsored by Tiptree she, Jams. Um, I think Jeanette is sponsored by Tiptree Jams. Yeah. <laughs> they are one of my clients. I do admit, <laughs> and and I do have a hamper of jam from them just in the other room. <laughs> We they are lovely clients, and they they look after me very well. Yeah, you see, and no marmalade, though. and no marmalade. We need. Well, sometimes when I go to their factory, when I go to their offices next to their factory, you go there and you can tell what they're making. And if they're making marmalade, it smells wonderful. It doesn't always smell so great when they're making chutney. Chutney. Mm. <laughs> so you um, say it. Get your votes in while we're chatting away. And yeah, I'm writing this down. Get your votes in. Your toast topping of the week, should it be jam or marmalade? Let me read you some more. Uh, Michael says, my favourite. That must have been when we were talking about jam. Was that? I don't know. It's hard to oh, tell. No. No. Um, Brenda says, oh, yeah, marmalade, especially the dark one. Ooh, <laughs> lovely. Um, Michael right. Francis says, orange whiskey or whatever. Which one? Orange marmalade? <laughs> or, oh, I, I, I guess that must mean... No, yeah. I'm not thinking... Whiskey marmalade. Marmalade. Yeah. Uh, but let's yeah. see. Make sure your votes are nice and clear for us because we're not very clever. Um, I'm not. <laughs> read this. Is jam sandwich when I was at school. Yes, we grew up on that. Kim says, don't like marmalade. It has to be jam on toast. Strawberry is my favourite. I'm the same. I love you. Um, Jenny Lifko, the queen of the uh, reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene, says, marmalade for me, please. Brian, I like jam. Chris, marmalade. There's a bit of having a bit of a domestic dispute over that at the moment. <laughs> Fun fact, says Quinton, everybody who ate marmalade in 1810 is now dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, perhaps I should stop eating it. The stateside humour is great, isn't it? It's fantastic. Um, Elmi says marmalade for me or marmite on toast. Oh, excuse me, Elmi. Apparently, what are you talking about marmite. Yeah. That's illegal. We have to discount that, Jeanette. It's not available for the pu public just yet. <laughs> Um, Marie says jam, tip tree jam, my favorite. Oh, they're doing well out of this one. <clears throat> Susie, she says she's not a fan of Eva, Ava, and oh, so uh, avocado, maybe that means, yeah, avocado and egg, which I don't Ooh. think is a choice either. Oh, you don't want to have it's a not toast of topping avocado of this that, week. Oh, avocado it just tastes of regret, doesn't it? Here we go again. We've just we've been through <laughs> this. So let's there. not talk about the avocado. Sorry. Um Sandra <laughs> says uh thinks Can you ask your sister not to bring it up again, please? <laughs> yeah, avocado, yeah, Susie. Yeah. Stick to the ones, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can't add third and fourth choices. There's no third way here, no. Susie. Never and, say and the A word. The other person no. said that you can get marmalade with whiskey in. That is quite nice. I think we might see. <laughs> okay. Uh, where are we? Keith's got to be fix shred. The more shred, the better. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I would pick those out. He's and living put them on, on the your edge toast. right there. That's <laughs> be no marmalade left. <laughs> Brenda says tip tree jams and marmalade are lovely. Um, what's your choice though, Brenda? Have you voted? Two votes said Michelle for jam on toast here. The kids at nursery love jam on toast. Definitely a favourite. Ken Delu says jam on toast. Helen says Johnny's going for marmalade and Helen's going for raspberry jam. 
there we go that's the that's the votes at the moment uh, keep them coming in we've got time to count a few more um we should get back to mr ad johnson he's waiting there patiently let me find him on my um apparatus and bring him forth i'll take off this jam or this marmalade and bring forth mr ad johnson and ask him before he sings what would he like what would you like out of a jam and marmalade ad you guys are missing out on the marmalade thing you need to give it another try. <laughs> marmalade I agree. marmalade all day long Excellent. it's that it's the sweet uh, combined with the you know the slightly tangy quality of the of the the oranges that contrast you know that's what it does for me sharp citrus is lovely yes. isn't it exactly on a bit of um, white or brown doesn't matter but some real butter as well slightly salted a bit of marmalade cup of tea what um, what brand <laughs> what brand we're allowed to talk brands what oh brand? okay well, okay so i mentioned tip tree earlier let's just pick up the local uh, business because they, they do some really lovely uh, marmalades just writing this down. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's just the one with a nice thick rind in it. That's good. Nice. I'm gonna put this on your Wikipedia later. So just check it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like a nice avocado marmalade myself. Yeah. <laughs> Who says that? You're saying that, Tom. No, no. <laughs> Jeanette. Um, apparently Steve, I was mm. gonna say Steve Smith, who's not here, but someone that knows him has said hook norton brewery make a good marmalade with beer in it mm. sorry ad you was going to say my friend oh uh, was i <laughs> can't remember <laughs> follow, sorry so let's get to ad and to singing you're going to do us another song should we just hand it over to you and you introduce it ad you can or not, not yeah yeah okay um, yeah sure and keep those votes coming in <laughs> jam marmalade jam <laughs> He's here. He's back with us once again. He's going to sing for you. Put your hands together for A.D. Johnson. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I promised myself I'd write a, a new song, knock out a new song for, the, for today's session. And um not sure what to call it yet, but I, quite, I think I'm going to call it Under Games for Skies. And it goes, hopefully, like this. Bear with me. <clears throat>
Excellent, AD. I was waiting for the false ending again as well. <laughs> I'll give you a real one that time. Yeah, yeah, really nice, lovely new song. Under yeah. Game for Skies, was that? Yeah. I was, um, well, the sort of the, the chorusy line, the fallen around thing, it just sort of came to me just out of nowhere, like these things do. I was watching a documentary on Gainsborough and um, being a Sudbury boy and all that, you see. Of course. And um, my, my granddad was a keen painter and used to love um, sort of introduced me to, you know, obviously Gainsborough and Constable and that sort of thing. And my stepdad is also a very fine artist. Anyway, so I've got an interest in all that sort of stuff. So it sort of worked its way into it. And I kind of imagined this kind of romantic idyllic idyll, kind of almost like some of his paintings, you know. Mm. the raw scenes in the background and stuff like that it's beautiful um let me see what people said quinton says absolutely gorgeous tune oh great thank keith, you keith says amazing hannah hi hannah she says right nice lady thanks hannah nice steve, to see you steve smith he's not here he's he's, he's at work he's but a friend of his <laughs> family good nice high notes with the same note yeah well, thank you uh, mm. Applause from uh, Elmi. Sandra says, great. And Kim says, lovely song and singer. That's you, AD. Oh, bless. Thank you, And Kim. Ken, Ken Saunders, a.k.a. Ken DeLue, um, says, nice song. Thanks, guys. You said Could it was you? the new one that you've just written, AD. How yeah. how often do you write new songs? And do not you enough. have times when you just don't write any at all? Yeah, not often enough. <laughs> um, what inspires you, then, to that, that makes you... well? I think so for this because I had big plans in the Easter time to sort of to really knuckle down and get the next album on the way. And then um but because um I can still work online teaching and I had no gig work which I need to make I need to, you know, earn a crust sort of thing. I've been doing a lot of teaching and um as much as I enjoy it, um it does sort of sap your creative energy sometimes. It's, it's getting that balance and I haven't mm. really got that balance, you know, at the moment. And I've kind of lost, kind of lost the love a little bit for it, um, if I'm honest. But you know, um, having this opportunity, and doing it where he kind of forces you, I, or, and I force myself to, I, I want to play new stuff for other people as well, because I'm conscious that you know people want it, or well, hopefully would like to hear new songs from it. So yeah. I would feel that pressure, you know. So, um, but yeah, so not as often as I like, but it's about time management, I think, isn't it? need to do that a bit more and uh, just even if it's just 10 15 minutes a day just say right i'm gonna sit down and do you ever collaborate with people i say that because i haven't written anything for a, quite a while and then mm. somebody asked me recently to collaborate on a song and so we've been working you know really it's quite difficult when you're um working in different towns and so everything you have to record your bit and then send it over then they record their bit mix it send it back and, yeah. and yeah. working like that but it is it's got me going again with songwriting oh, so great. have you considered doing that and and if so who would you collaborate with well funny enough i kind of did some i have been doing some collaboration with jeff clark but that's oh. doing library library music stuff yeah 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 so i heard one of the music. things he did the other day a spy thing it was fantastic oh right yeah he's, he, he does right some great stuff yeah and um but um because obviously he's a, he's a handy guitar player he doesn't need me so um he asked me if i could do some vocals so I've, I've done a couple of tracks um nice. for, for a couple of albums that he's working on so that's kind of a collaboration in a similar fashion you know yeah um but yeah I, i've um i think i approached tasha robinson recently i was asked her if, if she'd like to do something we kind of said yeah we'd, we'd do something because um oh, I really her voice would be lovely with yours mm. yeah and she's got she's just got a lovely knack for you know writing a lovely melody and stuff and i thought that would be quite nice but yeah yeah you know um so I, i'd like to do more of it i don't do enough of it i have to say but um yeah i should like to do some more yeah Excellent. so it's interesting to hear so, um i was just going to mention i collaborated with uh, a guy called vim aldike who was a producer of mine uh, uh, recording under the name snippet um, I recorded, uh, collaborated with him for nine years, just listening to Jeanette saying it, um, and AD uh, about collaborations. Nine years he produced my um, my albums, and we never ever met in person. We, it was planned, but he passed away on the just after the summer we were planned to meet. But it's amazing what you can do, sort of over the internet, isn't it? 
Yeah. So did he actually collaborate in terms of like with song structure and stuff like that? Did he or, uh, or... no? Mostly uh, he polished up what I sent him and kept the same arrangements. But now and again he would add a string arrangement. Oh, nice. Uh, I didn't have that. Yeah. And and change things up a little bit. But he, he usually kept the structure of the song. So I'd send him the demo, and then the version that ended was like a, just a much better version of the same structure. Um, but yeah, Tash Robinson's good. I sung a song with her uh, out of credit a few years ago. Um, she's got a great knack, as you say, for producing um, really catchy, catchy songs as well. Had one recently on, a, on an advert uh, that was uh, very popular. She has indeed, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. It's for Purcell or something, I think. I it was, she's yeah. Got, she's got one coming up for, um, I'm trying to think, the copy chain, big one. Anyway, she's got one coming up Christmas one, I think. Nice, nice, good. Yeah. Hope it makes uh, uh, earns her some money and uh, some uh, credit, which she deserves. Um, Emily says, "I love this song already, Ad." Oh. Um, and okay. Chris, sorry, didn't get you a chance to re re respond, Ad. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Um, sorry, I'm still getting getting used to this slight delay on things. Yeah, sorry, mate. Um, if I interrupt you, Chris said it would love to hear and hear him in real life again let's hope so soon chris and brian are two of a, a couple lovely couple who um come to our regular memory afternoons the in person the physical sessions before we went virtual um we will be back again the vaccine's on its way um we hope to see people in person well i saw um chris and uh brian in the week because they are members of the month next month in our um newsletter okay ad can we uh say toodle pip just for a minute while we resolve this uh toast toppings of the month yeah um uh, 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 if, just gonna say i have uh, a little um request as i might have mentioned to you a little earlier um, you did and lucky my memory's really bad <laughs> only because this guitar is in, currently in tune for that particular song so yeah if you don't mind, it, or we could come back. Somebody's to birthday. Whose birthday? It is somebody's birthday. Today. It's my dad's birthday. Ah. So I want to say happy birthday to him. And yeah. if you guys are up for it, we'll sing him happy birthday. Let's <laughs> have a go. <laughs> okay, it will be all, all out of time. But hey, that's all, you know. That's just starting over the top there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy birthday, Carl. Happy birthday. Carl. That's one. Happy birthday. There you go. <laughs> what's, his, what's, what's his name, Adi? Carl. Carl. Happy birthday, Carl, from all of us at the Warm and Toasty Club. Um, and online, Brenda says, happy birthday, Adi's dad, too. Oh. <laughs> And uh, Lorraine um, Francis, hi Lorraine. She says, "Oh, um, that, my dad's birthday tomorrow, so happy birthday, Michael Francis." Oh, Michael Francis. Oh, lovely. Steve Smith, who's not really there, somebody else sent it to him because Steve Smith, the actual Steve Smith, he's at work. Uh, he oh, says, "Happy busy. birthday." <laughs> Keith says, "Happy birthday." I'm sure there'll be more coming in. Thank you, Adi. Um, We'll have you back in a moment or two, my friend. Thanks. Ah, bless him. What a lovely chap. Right, so we had Toast Toppings of the Week, and we had um, Jam, and we had Marmalade. Jeanette, will you bring forth the decision? What is the Toast Topping of the Week? Drum roll, please, Jono. Jam roll. Because the winner is Marmalade. Marmalade is the... Toast topping of the week. Who would have thought it? Me. <laughs> I did. Well, you know, I have to tell you this. There's a little note on my script here that I've written earlier in the week, which said that in the top five spreads in the country, actually, surprising to me, marmalade was second and jam, jam, jamalade and jam was third. <laughs> so, yeah, people love it. And you've proved that today. That was Toast Toppings of the Week. So toppings of the week so toppings of the week 
Yes, there is. Um, Beautiful. What, it, what was he called? It's um, Noel Coward versus um, Nick Cave. Nick Cave. <laughs> Michael is happy. Hooray for the vote. Yay, says Brenda. She's happy. Well, there we go. We've had some something sweet from AD, something sweet from our uh, Toast Toppings of the Week. If you've got a suggestion of what you, you'd like us to do, we've done sweets, we've done biscuits, we've done cakes, we're on Toast Toppings. We've done pies. We've done pies. We even did a shop of the week. Walmart's first with Marks and Spencers. Um, yeah. Just let us know. If you want. If you have any particular toast toppings, we're running a little bit low on those. Do send them in. Um, <laughs> do let us know. Um, Go to the shops. And also, last a, a little last-minute request. If you want to include any of your old Christmas photos in our next newsletter, you need to get them to me by the weekend or on the weekend because uh it's it's being finished at the moment it's being well it's being worked on should we say um that's all Jeanette is now available for you for Jeanette's poem of the week me and Tom will get ourselves out of the way and hand over to Jeanette well I've often said that if there are any poems that you would like me to read out please do let us know send them in and that has happened this week Jenny Lithgow um send it in a poem that is absolutely lovely and I've said yes I will happily read this it's called Hug a Tree by Grace Dark go outside and hug a tree feel inspired wild and free fill your lungs with the cleanest of air no more stress sadness despair fill your eyes with majestic green the purest of visions you've ever seen soak in the rays of the sun and light every hour until it's night. No other place can provide such peace, tranquility, well-being and release. Go outside and hug a tree. Smile, breathe, let go and just be. That was Hug a Tree by Grace Dark. What a lovely short poem that was. I wasn't quite ready to come back, but now... Yeah, very nice, very nice. And that was sent in by um, Jenny Lifgoe, the former Queen, reinstated Queen of the Retro Raffle scene. And um, who was it by again, Jeanette? It was Grace Dark with an E on the end of Dark. Dark. Oh, nice. Dark A. Grace Dark A, you mean. Grace Dark. <laughs> Grace Dark, yeah. Okay. She sounds familiar, Grace Dark. Does she? Is she? Yeah. Hmm. wonder why. Hmm. When it comes back, uh, we'll have to look at her up on the Google. Yes, on the yeah. Google, on the good ship. Are you doing it now? Oh, yeah. we lost Jono. <laughs> Sorry, <I dropped>, yeah. <laughs> Is that what happens when you? It's either the Google or you. <laughs> it's the Google or me. You get one or the other. Um, Brenda says, "What a lovely poem!" Just going oh, out to hug one. Ah. Oh. Leah, she she applauds. Um, hi, oh, Leah. Yeah, it was. And yeah. Elmi says, love that poem. What's that, Tom? It was something that came up on Facebook on the... Uh, da, 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 some sort of um, eco page that pops up on Facebook. And it was Grace Dark on there with that poem, actually. Ah, maybe that's where Jenny saw it. Ah. I'm, I'm glad she did. I'm glad she pointed it out to us. And very happy to take suggestions. There you go. Jenny says, I thought it was lovely too and beautifully read, Jeanette. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jenny. There you go. Let's get back that man, A.D. Johnson. Let's find him. I'll find him on my upper arm. There he is. He's tuning, tuning up his guitar. He loves tuning it in different ways. Yeah, I know. It's a pain in the God damn it. Uh, I'll add to that. Kim says, well read, Jeanette. Lovely poem. I always hug a tree when walking through the forest. That's what got her arrested last time. <laughs> um, Marie says, lovely reading, Jeanette, and poem, we should all hug a tree. It's a family thing, obviously. <laughs> Jenny Lifko, the uh, former queen of the reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene, says, yes, I copied it from somewhere. Tom has found you out. He's like uh, Columbo. He found <laughs> it out. He's like uh, Miss Marple. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Marple. Mrs. Marple, <laughs> yes. sorry, you're married now, darling. So. I am. Um, Amy, welcome you're getting back. Getting trouble. Um, you you yeah. liked the marmalade, didn't you? So you was pleased the toast top I, got the boat. I think I might even cheer out loud. Really? The marmalade. Was, are you a are you? Yeah. Are you are you a big Kinks fan, 
AD. Yes, indeed. Because they, they wrote a song, didn't they? The Village Green Preservation Society. Yes. No, no, men mention. no mention of marmalade, funnily uh, enough. Is there not? No. The Kinks, not big fans of marmalade. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Do you know I have a fit? No, no, maybe, maybe. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't because they they list they list a ream of English kind of typical idiosyncrat. Um, yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm using uh, whatever. But anyway, yeah, good, good food. Stuff. Good food, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. And uh, yes, but it doesn't make it. Uh, maybe I should do a cover and chuck it in. Yeah, I think you might have to. I yeah. think you should. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think just a, a Kinks cover by you would be fantastic. Anyway. It, oh, okay. um, there's a thread that goes from people like Ray Davis and the Kinks through David Bowie through Damon Albarn, um, back way back when to um, Frankie Vaughan even sort of, um, and not saying you're anything like Frankie Vaughan, but um, you know you've got that kind of, you've got that style very English crossed with a beautiful Tom Waitsy kind of sound, um, um, you know Paul Weller as well had it. Um, and you you keep that flame burning, AD, I I think. Um you're you're here, but you're undervalued. That's not the right word, is it? But, uh... <laughs> right, well I'll, I'll get me coat. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is um... I need to get me coat, I'm already home. I'll pick the term, not underappreciated, but you know, sometimes you know the light should be shone on you a bit more. Um Oh, I'm going to give up now. I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? I'll switch the light on as if it's a bit dark. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, tell tell us, tell us, Adi, have you got a book out? Have you got an album out? <laughs> what are you doing at the moment? You want to plug? I haven't quite got to the uh, writing my uh, my book yet. Give it a few more years, I think. I'd put it on my shelf. Uh, yeah, I'd put it on mine as well. I'd want but... it on Kindle. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's happening? Um, so um, when I get my act together, um, there possibly is, I've spoke about it before, I'll tell her Worry Dolls because it's 10 years old, will be this year in December, uh, my first album. I've been speaking to um, Nathan at um, Rebellion Studios, who recorded it 10 years back, and we're sort of um, trying to um, pull together the original files so we can do a possibly uh well certainly a remaster of it anyway he's got some lovely reel to reels that he's using for remastering and he actually offered to do it so that's that's really, really lovely of him so that might be a thing obviously it's going to take a little while but um you know i will see maybe at the beginning of the year or something maybe christmas who knows but possibly vinyl for that mm -hmm. a little way further down the line if i can um yeah and these Oh, oh where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go, Aidy? We'll wait a minute to see if he's going to come back, of course. His album that he was talking about that's 10 years old Here is, is still in my car. It's yeah. just such a brilliant album. Aidy's our first solo album, and he's always back. Um, and we're back. Sorry about you that. were talking about the reel-to-reels, -reel, getting them remastered, vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my main, really, I want to, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's, I'd love to do it, but my main focus is I want to get a new album done. And so I've been working with Steve a little bit, um, um, uh, Backwater Records in, in Ipswich. Nice. And um, again, another, he's got a little reel to reel set up down there. And I want to do just a nice stripped back little record. Beautiful. So that's Beautiful. next thing. Um, Look forward to and, that. Uh, yeah. If people and, uh, wanted to get in touch about doing any streams or anything, would they go via yeah. your website? Yeah, they can contact me. There is a contact page on there. Yeah, so that they can get, get in touch through that. Uh, w, well, it's up there, is it? www.adjohnson.co.uk. There it is in front of my head. Um, Look at that. Yeah, I'm that's impressed. The best way to get rid of me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> get out of it. Um, adjohnson.co.uk if anyone didn't know you don't need to type in www anymore but for website that's true isn't it yeah. yeah you just put in the name as long as it's got a co.co.uk or .com or whatever at the end you'll, you'll be good to go so I, I can't have that on the screen in front of me for too long that's outrageous behavior so i'll bring that back <laughs> in a minute just a couple of comments there steve Steve Smith, or the guy who's not Steve Smith, because Steve Smith's at work, oh, the other guy, he says, vinyl, question, question. Mm -hmm. um, 
And Brenda says, I've got his CD from 10 years ago. Lovely. Uh, mm. And Kendalu, he says, lovely poem. We are all tree huggers. They've all had, they've all got form, basically. Um, <laughs> all the Saunders family. Um, so I did AD, notice a comment from a while back. Sorry, it's, it's not yeah, about AD, on. but you well, might I mean. like this and you might want to tune in because of this another time. Um, I think it was Brian suggesting crumble of the week. Ooh. I did write down. I wasn't sure if I saw crump. I'd read crumpets or crumbles. And I thought there's <laughs> only one crumble. crumpet. <laughs> you got apple crumble. You got rhubarb crumble. Got I crumpet like or muffin, I suppose, couldn't you? A muffin, muffin versus crumpet. Yeah. Mm, that's a good oh, one, actually, John. Great Tom. ideas. Great that's ideas. John. That's John. possibly the next two weeks <laughs> sorted for me. I can have a little lie down instead. <laughs> <laughs> you got to write a jingle about each one, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I might do a collaboration. I might ask you <laughs> to do the vocals on it. Yeah, can you write a jingle? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm on that. yeah let's do it. I bet he'd be great at jingles. Um, AD, it's great having you on the show. Um, sorry for our silliness. Um, but we, you're going to, before we head off, you're going to do your last song of the afternoon. Anything particularly we, we expect from this song, AD? Well, um, I just, I played it for a friend's birthday a little while back. It's a thing going on there um uh craig sandy's partner and um so um i just thought yeah i just had a, a thought oh, yeah i like that song i'm gonna give that play that one goes glass tower and actually speaking of collaborations when we when i first recorded that with you um i remember we you sort of sat with me and we we worked on the the engine we sort of tied it off together at the That's time right. so thank yeah. you for that <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. You're great. Your your music. I know sometimes you have backing and you have other uh, people playing with you, but which is great. But you're just great on your own as well, and it's, uh, it's such a joy to have you on the show. We're going to get out your way and let you do Glass Tower, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, here he is. Round of applause, Lady Johnson. <laughs> Stand 
where you are. Love that song, AD. Just lovely. Just lovely. You're a very talented man. Great songwriter, great singer, and a great musician too. It's been an honour to have you on our show. Thanks for joining us today, sir. It's been a pleasure. It's been uh, it's been uplifting. It's been lovely to see you all. So, uh, oh, bless you. Try, yeah, sorry. To try and tune in. Sorry, I was going to say I have to try and tune in sometime and uh, uh, once my Friday's free up a little bit and uh, watch the show. Well, you know, you you just got to make a crust and you got to get by, and it's hard for people. Um, those that can, we just our job is really trying to keep our communities connected. Um, for in lockdown too, it's it's you know it's hard, isn't it? Um, people trying to make a living and also just trying to survive to the lockdown till the vaccine comes. Um, so yeah, we don't expect you to drop in, but when you do, it's a real joy for us um, and a pleasure. That much so that we've gone half, past half two. So apologies <sighs> to everyone. But I should just mention a couple of comments that we got. Hannah Savage said good things are coming we are all still listening to your music and looking forward to more that's for oh, bless. lovely um, lovely jenny says well if you can't have you hug your loved ones loved ones just now you can hug a tree yep uh good good one jenny uh elmy says definitely a name to remember great to listen to um brian and chrissy say from both of us thank you for a lovely afternoon all keep safe see you next week Applause from Elmi. Susie says, love that song. Elmi says, thank you uh, all for a lovely afternoon. See you next week. And Keith says, brava, brava, brava. How'd you say it? Brava. Brava. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it like my... No. Anyway, we won't. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. Thanks, AD, for being a wonderful guest. Um, Jeanette and Tom, top, top, top co-hosting skills. Um, Steve Smith says, hang in there, AD. See you on tour next year and yeah. steve who wasn't he wasn't there but he's gone back to work now okay thanks for joining <laughs> us we're, we're funded by the national lottery community fund and we're here every friday up to and including the 18th of december this year and then we'll be back again in the new year until then stay safe keep well and we'll see you next friday afternoon at one o'clock bye Ooh. everyone have a good bye week. bye 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 i'm just going to find the credits all that invisible mending at the bottom of the screen. Give me a second. I've got to find it. There's so many things going on. Lovely to see you too, Ken. And um, see you next week, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us in the chat too. We've all got a tale to tell. Times were not always so. But putting it all aside, we made it through by and by. It's warm and toasty in here Share our laughter, sometimes tears You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three da -da -da -da. Wrapped in a little white cloth da -da -da -da. Cooking for hours in the old iron pot da -da -da -da. There's a jam roly-poly for tea da -da -da -da. Enough for you and Dad and Grandma and me what did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich or peas on toast? Nothing could come close. The bubble and squeak the day after our sun.